Welcome back. Now on Motivation this morning, we're going to be discussing mindset, faith and hope. We're discussing with the catalyst himself, Larry Olushola. He is the founder of the Olushola Larry Coaching Academy, uh, a mindset or rather a mind, emotions and behavioral change academy, renowned for his extensive array of works of coaching, public, uh, publishing and uh, keynote speaking with individuals and organizations, both locally and internationally. Welcome back to the show, boss. Thank you very much for having me on the show today again, Titi. You know, it's um, very challenging times, uh, mm. very disruptive times, but very interesting times. I say to mm. people, you know, in, <clears throat> in the times of greatest challenges, greatest chaos and adversities lie the greatest opportunities. Mm. The biggest opportunities hide themselves in the, in the times of greatest adversity. And so, you know, you, there's nothing that we see now that hasn't gone through challenging times or adversity. Is it gold? Gold goes through fire. Wow. You know, um, um, and petrol, diesel, kerosene goes through refining, mm. right? And, 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 you know, diamond, it goes through polishing. So we're all going through that process and we have to understand the power of the process and we have to go through the process. And so, you know, it's very interesting times. And, you know, speaking about mindset, faith, and hope, it is impossible for you to become anything. It is impossible for you to achieve anything without the right set mindset, without the right faith, and without hope. For, you know, hope is key. Without hope, you are dead. Without faith, you are dead. Without the right mindset, you know, you'll just be like a madman. The difference between a madman and someone that is functional is that he has lost his mind. So you have to keep your mind in this COVID-19 difficult times, because if you lose your mind, you've lost it all. And so- uh, Coach, you can, can I ask you yeah. to give, can, you, can I ask you to give a case study, an actual case, of course, maybe names withheld. Can you give an actual case uh, where um, the f mindset, mindset, faith and hope actually came to play and worked for one of your, your clients? All right. I mean, I, I can give you several. Um, so I'll, I'll give you a classic. Um, so I had a couple come to see me um, and they had been struggling for 10 years. They've been married for about 18, 18 years. The man had been abusing his wife for 10 years, 10 years. He had been beating up his wife. They've gone for deliverance. They've gone for prayer. They've gone for all manners of things. And so as a last uh, bus stop, someone referred them and said that for them to come to me. So I'd, I'd uh, sign them up for uh, about nine, nine sessions, um, nine sessions over nine weeks. So week one, they came to me and I spoke to them. I identified what their issues were. Week two, I started working with them. Week three, you know, I, I realized what the issue was. And so one of the, um, you know, tools that I work with, interventions that I work with, I, I call it systems thinking and space dynamics. So I created the architecture of their home you know, using some tools that I had. And we went, we walked through, you know, um, just like you have Lego. So I recreated the architecture of their home and I put pieces of individuals, which were both of them and their family. Now they recognized that every morning the man would beat his wife and slap his wife early in the morning before they go, go out to work. And so we started to eliminate from the sitting room. It wasn't the sitting room. I moved them around because I was looking physiologically at the response as an emotional and physiological response from them. Now, and I moved them in the sitting room, in the kitchen, moved them upstairs to the um, sitting room upstairs, to the rooms upstairs. I moved them into their bedroom. It wasn't their bedroom. Then I moved them into their bathroom. Now, when I moved them around from the bathtub to the shower, to the toilet, to the wash hand basin, when I moved into the wash hand basin, the man snapped. Wow, who, 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 what kind of foolish, stupid woman presses toothpaste from the middle? What kind of stupid woman presses toothpaste for the middle? I looked at his wife and she stepped back. I could see fear in her eyes. I could see anxiety and worry. So I let him calm down in two minutes. And then I asked him, what just happened there? So he turned to me and said, what do you mean what just happened there? I said, yeah, what just happened? You were having a, a, a fury um, um, outburst. He says, he doesn't understand what I'm talking about. And then I realized that his mindset from when he was young was affecting him. So I took him back on a time timeline travel to when he was four years old. His father used to beat him, 
You know those toothpaste, metal toothpaste cases, aluminum toothpaste cases, we used to use them, yeah. Maclean, Colgate. When you yeah. press it and it bursts in the middle, yeah. and it will, it will untie, it, it will stain the, uh, the wash hand basin. His father used to come into his room every morning and beat him and tell him what kind of stupid, uh, foolish boy presses toothpaste from the middle. So his mindset was shaped by his father. He was reacting like his father, but he didn't realize that as, we, as they spoke that, that day, they were using plastic tubes. You know the new mm. plastic tubes that we use, mm. right? It wouldn't burst. And so he didn't realize that he was reacting from the program and the meta program that had been installed then. Hmm. He believed that people that pressed toothpaste from the middle were stupid, foolish people, and he didn't recognize that his wife was not him and his, he wasn't his father. And hmm. so he had juxtaposed hmm. his father, his, he, himself, to his wife and his relationship. Mm. And so immediately he came to that realization. He just prostrated and apologized to his wife and promised that it will never happen again. They got up, they left my office. Mm. So I left them for a few weeks. And after a few weeks, I called them and I asked them, how has everything been? They said, fine. I said, well, you got changed with me, you know, because I, I scheduled you for nine sessions. We've only done three sessions. The man looked, uh, on the phone said to me, sir, um, I have one question for you. Did you solve our problem? I said, yes. He says, this problem we've been trying to solve for almost 10 years. You solved it in three weeks. You don't owe me. I paid you to solve the problem. Keep the, the, the change. And so you would realize that, you know, our environments shape our mindset. They shape our faith and the things that we hope for. In fact, the definition of faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not yet physically manifest. And I also say to people that faith and fear, they are one and the same. So as we speak today during this COVID-19 season and pandemic, a lot of people are focusing on the amount of death. Hmm. Now, <clears throat> as I speak today, there's been 14.4 million cases that are tested. 8.25 million, <clears throat> million people have recovered. Only 605 people have died. But well, guess what? A lot of us are focusing because the attention of news is the 605 that have died, not the 14 million people that have survived it. So faith is what we focus on and meditate upon. So a lot of people are afraid that they will die. They are anxious. They are worried for themselves and their families. They are anxious that their businesses will fail. Zoom is making so much money. Okay. Instagram is making so much money. Netflix is making so much money. You just have to sit down and think about the problems that you are mm. here to solve, the needs right. that the, your customers have, and reshape. GoCada was shut down. Guess what? They changed the business to a logistic business, mm. not a transportation business. And so your mindset is the problem. I say to people, the way you see the problem is the problem. If you do not have hope for the future, mm. you will have the negative mindset. If you do not have hope for the future, your faith is gone. I'm sitting on a chair now, right? And I'm speaking to you via one technology that I don't even yeah. know how it works. <laughs> uh, with the hope, mm. with the hope that we will connect, with the hope that yeah. I'll be speaking to, to your viewers, yeah. with the faith that when you speak to your viewers, they, uh, things will happen to them, and with the mindset that you know what, I am created and wired to help My hope life. right and now is mind. that we can continue this conversation. My hope right now is that this conversation <laughs> will continue on social media right now uh, with the hashtag Wake wow. Up Nigeria on TVC. There's never enough time uh, to, uh, you know, to speak with the coach himself. Thank you so much for being our catalyst this morning. Thank you, darling. We'll speak Thank with you, you next week once again uh, right here on Wake week. Up Nigeria.